Mick Cronin's Bruins are on the rebuild. Which transfer portal gets will make them national championship good by the time the Final Four hits in 2025? You are locked on UCLA, your daily podcast on the UCLA Bruins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to this episode of Locked On UCLA. I'm your host, Zach Anderson, the Oxheimer. Thanks for making this show your first listen each and every day. It's free where we get your podcast and it's available on YouTube. Like, comment, subscribe, review. Thanks for your support. If you're every day or hey, we're going to get back on the grind a little bit as we work our way towards transfer portal season, spring football season, and spring sports season. I've said a lot. Let's get back into it. As we start with this episode, the Bruins have been hitting the portal hard. Mick Cronin is going after his solid, going after talent. He is not wasting anything. There are more guys that could potentially leave. There are more guys that might be added on this roster, as reported by various outlets, whether it's 24-7 Sports and Bro Report, whether it's Adam Zagoria, talking about who the Bruins have coming in for an official visit this weekend. A lot is moving for Mick Cronin, who has to be sitting there wondering, is Adem Bona going to stay? Who's the next guy that's going to be in the transfer portal? Or this is not official insight, but this is just how the game of college basketball works. Coaches will force out their players. They will say, go find somewhere else. I might make a call, find you a spot in a lower school, a mid-major, whatever it may be. Coaches do force out their players. Players get disgruntled or they see, hey, this kid committed. What does that mean to my already minute playing time? What that mean? Like, I already have a minuscule playing time, right? It's so limited. So Cronin's going after guys. Who are possible gets that will make UCLA elite? I've already fought with the guys they got. Sky Clark, Kobe Johnson. Great. Leadership in the locker room. Defense. Scoring three-point. Awesome. Where are the Bruins going after, right? Clark Slackert out of Penn is someone who recently listed UCLA in his top eight as a transfer portal kit. I'm not sure that's realistic. Averages 18 points from Penn. He's a guy that will be a one-year guy. Has a lot of pedigree from the Ivy League. A senior whose hometown is Los Angeles in Clark Slackard. 40% from three, an elite score. However, I do think that would be a little tough for UCLA to get if we dive right into things. He's in the top eight, but you think Sky Clark, ball dominant, guy has the ball, been a couple of schools. Cronin's already going out on a limb getting Sky Clark. Kobe Johnson's like to shoot. Sebastian Max still on the roster. You still got Dylan Andrews. You guys who you have guys who want and need the ball on this team. I'm not entirely sure where Slacker would fit in. I would love to have him. The more talent, the more shooting, the better for this dang team because they simply did not have it. And we're a couple of three-point shooting nights from Dylan Andrews at the end of the season from having their worst three-point shooting team in history for a team that struggled to score the basketball. And they need perimeter scoring. Slacker, I'm not sure is the answer, but they're going after him. He is an answer. I'm not sure he's going to choose UCLA, which has already been something. But what Bro Reports talked about is looking at Dominic Harris. The Bruins have done their best to go after Dominic Harris, a kid who from LMU, 6'3", redshirt junior. He is from Murrieta, California, SoCal kid, went to Gonzaga, went to LMU as the NCAA has trying to figure out the two-time all-time transfer rule. This is a kid the, the kid the Bruins can go after that they probably couldn't go after in the past. A guy who didn't see a lot of playing time, goes, plays in the WCC, puts some buckets, and now wants to make another leap forward. That's what we're seeing in today's age of college basketball. Guys who went to Gonzaga, went to UCLA, they go to, they go to all these schools, they don't like their PT. They think they're good. They go ball out. They prove, hey, I am a baller. I didn't have my opportunity. And then they go fetch in some NIL bucks at another school. That is what this two-time, three-time transfer rule was looking like. And they only go maybe one more, probably based on classes and majors and master's degrees, if you even get that far for some of these kids. Because remember, this is the last true year, barring super red shirts and injury red shirts, where kids are large in part going to use their COVID year. This is old. This is where you got to understand what the building block is for Mick Cronin. Do you go after? Do you go after guys who 
one year mercenaries, as I've seen the comments. Do you want to go after those guys who can make you elite good trying to compete with the back to back champs of UConn? I know they're losing a lot of talent, a lot of guys who have figured out the portal and reloading and figure th figuring things out. Do you want to go after that one year mercenary who would legitimately, you get a slacker, you get another Superman, you bring in the likes of a Dembono returning or someone else who we'll talk about later to be one year good. Or you bring someone with another year of eligibility, build, and when college basketball shifts back to an emphasis on younger players with 23, 24-year-olds gone, UCLA is already going to be older with Andrews, Mac, all these guys. They're already going to be older, so they'll have that leg up when the NIL Bucks, who are keeping guys, is going to shift towards freshmen again and not fifth, sixth-year seniors looking to get a leg up on three-time transfers. The Bruins are all going to be older. If you think about it, when all these COVID guys are slowly phased out, all the COVID players are slowly getting phased out. So we take a look at Dominic Harris, right? Someone who can take advantage of this multi-transfer portal era. And let's take a look at Harris's numbers. Probably a better fit. And from Bro Report, looks like he might be one of the next commits to fill a UCLA scholarship spot. Someone who averaged 14 points per game, including 20 points in his last game of the season against San Diego. He had 44% from three, 42% from four, 78% from the free throw line, three rebounds a game, and large in part, did not have a big turnover bug. Played a lot, started in just about every game. at Down the stretch for LMU, Dominic Harris did, did have two turnovers to every assist, but those turnover numbers were buoyed by a couple of terrible games against Gonzaga and some really good teams. This is a kid who can go and shoot the three ball. It's more than Slacker. Not because Slacker isn't good or Harris is much better. It's because I think with what UCLA has in ball dominant guards, this kid who reportedly might be on the inside track to come to UCLA is a shooter, can score the basketball, and will fit in, I think, as a 6'3 guard. If Cronin can bring in some defensive intangibles, then Harris can certainly fit the bill for UCLA. Fit the role that is open. I'm not sure Slacker and the role UCLA has open based on the players they have brought in mesh really well for an 18-point-per-game score. But for Harris, who takes large in part, a large most of his shots came from three. 261 shots last year. Harris, 145 three-point shots attempted and still averaged 14 points per game. That's a lethal shooter to come off your bench. Or if Cronin wanted to start him, get a good offensive start, that's a good guy to have who averaged 28 minutes per game, doesn't need 35, could come out and be a good shooter. That is a good look if the Bruins can get him. That is a solid lock, and I think better than Eric Daly Jr. And better than, excuse me, than, than Clark Slackard. But Eric Daly Jr., the Oklahoma State transfer, the 6'8 freshman who played at IMG Academy, hailing from Florida, this is someone who UCLA is trying to go after. Daly Jr., according to Adam Zagoria, he is someone who the Bruins are hosting for an official visit this upcoming weekend in the second full weekend of April. Someone who comes in, his best game was 20 points against Oklahoma overall this season, averaged nine points, five boards, could be a physical threat, 49% for the field. You'd like to see that number and percentage be a little bit better for a 6'8". Probable big man, how Mick Cronin would use him, but 33% from three. So this is a guy who Mick Cronin could possibly turn into a Cody Riley, small ball five, but can stretch beyond the free throw line and shoot as a three. The Bruins are hosting this guy. And if Cronin, this could signal a shift, right? Is Cronin going to go back to the team where he had big, long guards, better shooters, guys who could score the basketball, elite defenders, a tough nose, hard nose, physical bunch, play small to five, get a better big who can stretch in terms of offensively, and then just live with the physicality of everybody making up for a potential loss in a Dembona, which there's no word as to what he's doing at this moment. But I think Daly could represent a very strong four, could represent a small ball five as UCLA attempts and tries to figure out their better K and a Daimata situations, which we've Try to figure out, is Mata staying? Is Beacon Gel staying? Those are all things with UCLA entertaining Daly Jr. And if they bring him in, 
I think that could be a replacement for Bona, or that's a signal, an absolute signal that they're losing better K or a die. Because you don't bring in a 6'8 kid to fill up a roster spot when you've got Devin Williams, a die, better K, Bona. One of those guys has to be leaving, and the Bruins have to entertain Daly, who does shoot the three better than all those guys combined because they're more for small fours or fives in Cronin's lineup. Daly would be a good get. I just wonder who would be going if the Bruins leave. That would mean maybe a small ball five if he comes, have a die be a, a unique stretch four, a unicorn defensively or offensively, and have him be on the elbow, have him go back and forth between those two guys. Or maybe Berke goes back and plays pro ball. Well, I don't know what that means. There's no insight at this moment. But that definitely means that the Bruins are already taming this guy. And he comes to UCLA. Unless Bona comes back, that one of those other guys are probably leaving as well. So Daly comes in, can shoot the three. We'd like to see those rebound numbers improve if the Bruins get him. But large in part started a good portion of games at Oklahoma State's. Played a lot of minutes off the bench, more than half the minutes, but came off the bench in the second half of the season for the for the Cowboys. But I do wonder, he comes, that means, that has to mean a die, Bedeke, or Devin Williams are not returning. I don't see him coming with those three guys on the roster and not any of them leaving beyond the bonus situation. That, that is my thought with what they're entertaining now, and what Cronin sees, considering he's already seen a couple of guys leave. And while I'll touch on that in a moment, my thought to potentially replace it, a Dembona, just replace, if you want to go for a one-year superstar, Umar Balo. If Bona leaves, Umar Balo would be that perfect one-year fit as if a Devin Williams stays, get him to bulk up, get strength for a sophomore, then hopefully junior year, maybe a die and better K, one of those two guys stay. You bring in Balo, who just went in the portal from Arizona, that would be unique to go get a big man who, if you see how things went out, Hunter Dickinson went to Kansas, right, left from Michigan. I wonder what he's going to do in Balo. But if he wants to stay west and go even further, Mick Cronin should certainly give Daly all his time, all his interest. Look and say, Balo, come, man. Come to UCLA. That A guy who averaged a double-double, had 20 rebounds, got some buckets when you feed it to him in the post, would be the perfect replacement if a Dembona leaves. And I know UCLA is trying to pony up NIL to keep Bona. UCLA, we all, UCLA wants Bona to stay. Because if he stays, that's less of a headache for Mick Cronin to go after a big. He just wants elite guard scoring to keep a couple of his bigs, to develop, have Bona be an elite junior player, make him even better as an offensive player, silly offensive fouls, take that away, make him a First round NBA draft pick after his potential junior season. And then he doesn't have to worry about Ballos or even the dailies potentially in that matter. But the moment he's entertaining it, I think waiting to see what bonus decision is. And I think Ballo, with him just going in the portal out of Arizona, you out of nowhere, would be a unique get for UCLA. Now there's a lot to talk about, but I wonder what that would mean. But who's leaving? Both the football team and the basketball team? Yeah, there's movement. Two players leaving for football, another basketball player leaving. Let's talk about that next on Locked On UCLA. It's playoff time as we reach the NBA playoff season, NHL Stanley Cup playoffs, baseball's in full swing, and of course, FanDuel is your best place. It's your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed that's 150 bucks win or lose everything from slap shots home runs slam dunks on an app that's safe secure and easy to use what are you waiting for go to fanduel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win fanduel america's number one sports book go to fanduel.com slash locked on All right, cruising on here at Locked On UCLA, two segments today. We're talking about who's leaving. Basketball program, who's leaving McCronin's program, who's leaving Deshaun Foster's program, right? Our, the whole big touting was nobody's left. Deshaun Foster, nobody's left yet. The football program, McCronin, who's going to leave? They got a couple of 
transfers in. That means spots and time will be limited based on the talent he wants to bring in, and more so. So thus, we're going to start with Jan Vide and Logan Cremonesi. But first, Vide, who's actually the scholarship player, the third player who Mick Cronin gave playing time to this season, is leaving. Vide, someone who hailed from Slovenia, 6'6 guard, who I thought had some promise, some sneaky offensive ability. Wonder what it would have been like to see him develop defensively and offensively, offensively over the year. Only averaged a little over a point per game. Played 175 minutes this year. Shot 38% from the floor. But at the end of the season, 14 minutes against Arizona, 10 minutes against Oregon State in the Pac-12 tournament, and then 24 minutes against Oregon in the Pac-12 tournament quarterfinal in a game where UCLA needed to have it, and it came down to the stretch and the nitty-gritty. Mick Cronin was trusting his freshman point guard. So it's interesting how Vide is the one leaving. Now, maybe he saw writing on the wall how time is going to be a little bit tough to grab, and it was up for grabs this next year with the need for scoring, the intermittent playing time, yes, no, maybe so. Would have loved to see him stay. But in the end, it's another one of those freshmen, another international freshman. The third international product is he was a freshman. He was a young freshman like Fible was, unlike Abramo Zanka. Remember Zanka? He was a youngster, late come in, then left. That's the third international recruit after his first year at UCLA to leave. So I wonder what McCronin's strategy is. Because all he did was tout himself as, hey, Guys are ready for the tough strategies. They have tough coaches overseas, right? And is it playing time? Is it global? A global epidemic where kids want playing time, need playing time right away. Did Mick Cronin tell him, I love your game. Unfortunately, we're moving in a different direction to see how I can improve this roster because last year's season was unacceptable. My Sanders, and I'm going to go after everybody in the portal. The NIL bucks are pouring in. We're going to do that. Right, that that is maybe what he's doing. Right, that is absolutely what he's doing, but it is concerning for him to completely flip, make a position uniquely designed to replace Ivo Samovich, get three guys in recent years, and obviously more than that, who have come in and left after a single season at UCLA. And I wonder how much of that has to do with Samovich leaving, going to the NBA, and not being able to be that little guy, be that guy, that middleman to bring in the relationship between the international play to UCLA and be that, maybe not the barrier, but kind of be that coach on and off the floor that is now in the Raptors organization while UCLA put all this effort into international recruits. And now three of them are left after a year. And I think there's some talent with Vide, certainly some athleticism with Fible, who could develop. And I think guys will be getting uh, underrated talents with Vide and certainly with Fible defensively. It's funny. If you put Vide and Fible together, you get like a perfect player defensively and offensively, athleticism and size and skill and agility. And separately, they're unique talents, both leaving the UCLA program. And it's sad to see UCLA go technically the fourth player to leave the program, but third with playing time. Unique considering he got so much time late this season. That generally means Cronin trusts you in big moments, especially as a guard. In the end, it's not how it's going to play out. That's just not how it's going to play out. And again, as unlikely as it may seem, guys can always withdraw and come back. That's just not how the situation is working right now with UCLA coming off an under 500 season and Cronin, I think, will stop at nothing. You think this guy is maniacally competitive, throwing jackets on the sideline, very thoughtful and really into games. Can you imagine what this under 500 season did breaking his tournament streak as the coach of UCLA, which he takes as an honor takes seriously. And he sees UConn and winning back-to-back titles. He sees everybody else having some success and he wants to go be a one seed and dominate. I know maybe he was blowing smoke up, you know, he's just "Ah, smoke over there. Right. He was just saying, all right, that we have talented freshmen. Maybe we all believed it. Maybe it didn't develop as great. That's got to be crazy, which is why you're going to see a lot of turnover. We've already seen a little bit, probably more, and even more so if Bona goes to the draft and leaves after his sophomore campaign as the Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year. But V-Day leaves interesting. 
I wonder if that opens the door for somebody else or if that leaves it because of Kobe Johnson and Sky Clark. We'll find out. Now moving to the gridiron, we haven't really touched on spring practice yet, the Garbers-Martin mini battle. But what's important is the guy not in there, I already discussed this, Colin Schley, leaves. Deshaun Foster addressed it, talking to the media over a weekend of practice and said it seemed like he wanted to go back to the East Coast. And if you think about it, how is his game going to translate in an offensive scheme with Eric the enemy? Do you want to use that running style quarterback, that back and forth that Chip Kelly attempted? They tried to do this dual QB threat thing. Schley certainly, his mechanics weren't there to throw the ball, at least with what UCLA needed him to do. Great runner, great athlete. I'm not entirely sure if they asked him to switch positions or do different things because he's an incredible athlete. But in the end, what Deshaun Foster said, East Coast, want to go back, and maybe he might earn more playing time elsewhere because he went as a grad transfer. The portal's not technically open for football. You're going to see all these spring practices, and then the portal gets crazy. But as a grad transfer, he can go do that and take the an early step into finding a new home and potentially winning a job somewhere else, even after spring practice has begun across the country. Across the country, absolutely. So Colin Shea leaves. And then Shea Bryant Strother, one of the returning defensive edge rushes for UCLA with some experience, he's in the portal. And I was wondering, hey, with Akaka Malloy's new system, or maybe he was going to try and filter in some things, he was the D-line coach, right? He was making sure everything was going. You had the Latus, you had the Murphy twins. It was hopefully going to be a Bryant Strother year to grow and develop. And I wonder what, what happened there. Maybe there's... A change, maybe nothing happened. Maybe he's just frustrated and didn't like how spring practice is going because now that's the third Bruin to transfer. You have Kyle Ford, who maybe just didn't vie with everybody, and he's going to go find a new home. You've got Colin Schley, who already wasn't the number one quarterback and isn't necessarily home being on the wet. Not saying that he doesn't like UCLA, but obviously home, as Deshaun Foster alluded to, it's on the East Coast and wants to maybe go use his last year elsewhere, which is what he's planning to do at the moment. And then you got Shea Bryant Strother, who's in the portal for UCLA. It's interesting. It's certainly interesting to see how that is going to play out. But in the end, of all the super talented guys, who's actually left from UCLA through the portal, right? Who with significant experience and play on the field has left the Bruins need to replace guys, but not because of the portal, because of the draft. I know Carson Steele went to the draft, but I think UCLA could still translate what they have, maybe steal a couple more guys in the portal. I'm not how Deshaun, sure Deshaun Foster is going to go after guys in the portal when it reopens, but I, I do think it will be interesting to see what the Bruins do because he's been going after high school recruits hard, and I wonder what he thinks he needs and what he is actually believing he can accomplish with the portal and everything in between that can truly help this year's roster other than more depth pieces, depth play, and versus an impact player at this stage in the game in April, looking forward into the 2024 season as a Big Ten conference team. It's still weird looking at recruiting rankings, looking at next year's preseason rankings, way too early top 25s, and see them as a Big Ten team. It, it still has not triggered yet, and it won't really hit, even if it does in August. It, it just won't do so. So I just wonder when that's going to happen. But that's who's leaving. You've got V-Day. You've got Shea Brian Strother. Schley's leaving. All reportedly 24-7 sports. All these different outlets saying, yes, these guys are all leaving. Now, they didn't all get big minutes, all big playing time, but I would love to see those guys develop. But we wish them the best at their new homes, or if they go pro, depending on how things play out, depending on who it is, whether it's basketball for V-Day or Brian Strother going someone else, we wish them the best as they played as former Bruins now. Now, next, we're going to talk more spring practice in the upcoming episodes. We will talk more portal for Cronin, who is going to leave next. Probably a lot of focus will be emphasized on Dem Bonus decision and the Adai and Baderke situation. And then we've got Who's the next commit? There will be another one or two, dare I say three, new additions that Cronin's going to go after, in addition to the two commits he already got. Who's going to get? We'll find out. But stay tuned and locked on UCLA. 
Subscribe, like, comment. Thanks for your support. Hands up, Bruins fans. A clap time, baby. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. U C L A. U C L A. Fight, fight, fight. This has been Locked On UCLA. Zach signing off. Go Bruins.